on the next episode of AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. Killing drives some people mad. Gets easier every time. You know who I am? Your mother's in trouble, Nick. Come on. Release the river to the people. Questions keep turning in my mind. For more Fear the Walking Dead. Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down and analyzing two new sneak peeks along with a new trailer for the double episode finale for Season 3 of Fear the Walking Dead. The promos are mainly focused around Season 3 Episode 15, but this video will also include my full predictions for the double finale in general. With that being said, major warning of spoilers and let's jump right into this. So I'm first going to start with the 30 second promo trailer for episode 315 and then we'll go ahead and look at the two sneak peeks that give a more in-depth look at certain situations. So the trailer starts with Nick collecting zombie heads in a shopping cart, but why? Well, when Alicia met up with that Diana woman last episode, we learned that she actually collects zombie teeth and fingers in order to sell them for profit at the bazaar because people make trinkets and amulets and stuff like that. So with that in mind, is Nick doing the same thing here? He told Madison that he would build up some credibility for them at the bazaar, so is this him doing that? And as far as Alicia goes this episode, it looks like people are actually chasing after her and Diana for some reason or another. First, we see what looks like Alicia's Jeep getting T-boned by a large black SUV. Then, while we get images of zombies closing in on the crash site, we also get multiple jump cuts of both Alicia and Diana getting attacked by people. We see Alicia fighting off some man in a leather jacket dressed up in all black, while Diana uses her pickaxe to take out a different man dressed with blue. So who is trying to attack them? It's possible that people could be angry with Diana for some reason or another, but is that really the case? I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but we do have a clue in the trailer for a possible answer. Now, in the trailer, we see Strand point his gun dramatically, then it cuts to Alicia, and then it cuts to this new character, who I believe is one of the leaders of the bazaar. I'm not sure if this is Proctor19 or Proctor John, but my point is that this person could be the one chasing after Alicia. I say this because while we get those quick cuts, we hear the man say, do you know who I am? So is this the man talking to Alicia, or is this the man talking to Strand? I actually think that this is him talking to Alicia because I believe that Strand is actually pointing his gun at Daniel and not whoever the hell this guy is. Later on in the trailer, we can see a very quick struggle between Strand and Daniel where it looks like Daniel is trying to knock the gun out of Strand's hand. So why is Daniel once again pissed off at Strand? Throughout the trailer, we see some not so nice men swarming the dam, shooting off rounds, and after taking a closer look, you can notice that it's actually Proctor19 and his men from the bazaar. So who are these people? Well, at the end of last episode, Strand actually went to meet with that Proctor19 guy to go give up information about the dam to the leader of the bazaar, Proctor John, who sounds like the new main antagonist. Now, although we didn't actually see him, we've heard his name mentioned multiple times, and I can only assume that we'll see him next episode. So anyway, what are Strand's true motives here? At first, it seems like he just wanted to trade the dam's information for supplies in return, but could there be more than that? At first, Strand's the one to supposedly rat out the dam, but then later on in the trailer, we see him alongside everyone else at the dam trying to figure out how to defend it. So Strand ratted out the dam just to run and warn everyone about it? Strand's been known to pull a long con before, but we'll just have to wait and see what his true motives are. So in one way or another, pretty much everyone ends up at the dam, planning on defending it. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and look at the Talking Dead sneak peek for the episode, which actually involves this meeting. Troy found the staging area. Yeah, they have weapons, boats, like a tray, uh, barcos. Barcos? Si. Hablo espanol un, un poco. Those proctors were in business with narcos before the infection. They have no regard for human life. We'll turn the water off, starve the people, and demand tribute. No podemos permitirlo. I wish we had the weapons you promised. We may not need them if we can withstand a siege. We have what looks like Madison, Strand, Daniel, Ephraim, Lola, Nick, and Troy all in a room together plotting on what to do. So, everyone except Walker? Is that just because Daniel doesn't like him or whatever because Walker turned Ophelia into a murderer or something? But anyways, with the group seemingly well aware that the Proctor's group is going to attack, they debate on how to handle the situation. 
Nick and Choi mention that they saw the enemy with three boats, so at some point do we see Nick and Choi spying on them? And then Efrain mentions that the Proctors did business with the Narcos pre-apocalypse, stating that they have no respect for human life. There are three entryways, gate, the lower gate, and the bridge. We can post guards and weapons there. What if they attack from the water? Well, then we okay. just pick them off on the bridge. Daniel, there's C4 in storage, left over from when the dam was built. We should wire it to blow. There's a drought already, man. It's only getting worse. Daniel then mentions that there are three ground entrances to the dam, two gates, and one bridge. And so, as they evaluate their defense plan, this once again brings up the issue of Efrain trying to convince Alola to open up the dam walls and flood the entire area. The sneak peek ends with Daniel declaring that they will first attempt to defend the dam, but if it comes down to it, uh, they'll use Efrain's idea as one final bargaining ship. And speaking of which, we see a bit of this teased in the trailer as Lola struggles to hold the levers, but that's where it actually ends off, so will Lola pull the lever? Release the river to the people. It's better to take our chances with Mother Nature than to die of thirst under the proctors. We can't jeopardize the water. No, that's a good idea, Efrain. We defend, but if they breach, we have a final bargaining chip. Anyone who wants to leave should. Now, anyone who stays, defends. It seems like the season 3 finale will be a big battle at the dam, so who will win? At this point, it's honestly a toss up. They just literally lost Brokejaw Ranch as a location an episode or so ago, and if that place wasn't safe, then this place isn't either. I don't see them carrying the dam storyline into season 4, as it will have run its course and usefulness by this point. There's only so many times the show can make us watch a battle over power for the control of the water, which leads me to actually believe that we might truly see the floodgates open, giving an end to it all. Although characters like Lola or Efrain could be left behind to maintain it, I doubt that the dam will be useful going into season 4, but that's just me, and we've already seen what happens when Lola and Efrain try to control the dam, and that pretty much led them into the situation they're in now, so the dam probably won't continue into season 4, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens in this double finale. Now let's go ahead and discuss the final sneak peek, which actually involves Nick and Daniel catching up with each other. You, you were with her with my Ophelia when she was bitten. No, no, I, w I wasn't. Wasn't everyone trapped in a bunker? Most. I was outside trying to stop the horde. You were outside? Yeah. You saw it coming? Mm. I mean, not until it was too late. How could you miss it? The name of the sneak peek is called Daniel's Interrogation, which pretty much sums it all up. As Daniel asks Nick about what happened at the ranch, he explains that he wasn't with Ophelia because he was actually outside the bunker with Troy while everyone else was inside trapped. Nick gives Daniel the same excuses that he gave everyone else, covering up the fact that the horde was really Troy's fault, but Daniel can tell that something's up. As we all know, Daniel is a pro at detecting bullshit. The second that Nick mentioned Troy, Daniel knew something was up, and it's not that Daniel actually knows anything about Troy really or that he's a bad guy, it's just that he could tell Nick's hesitation because he was lying. Well, it just came from somewhere out in, in the wilderness, and um, Troy saw it. Then he came, he warned me. Yeah, we thought maybe we can redirect it, but by that point it was just too close. And... But, uh, Felia was in the bunker with Alicia. Bye. So while Nick continues fumbling through his excuses, Daniel ends up walking right past him and towards the exit. Now while Nick originally assumes that Daniel is just leaving due to lack of interest, he actually shuts the exit, implying that he's locking it and not allowing Nick to leave until he tells him more information. So how far will Daniel's interrogation go? Considering that they have a huge attack that they have to defend against, I'm pretty sure that Nick and Daniel will both leave that room in some sort of agreement with each other. I doubt that Daniel will be anywhere as near as brutal as he was when he was torturing Efrain in Season 3 Episode 4, but he probably will threaten the truth out of Nick quite a bit. So what do you guys think about these trailers and sneak peeks? Is there anything that I've missed? Feel free to leave any theories or predictions down in the comments section below. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today or even subscribe for more Fear the Walking Dead content in the near future. If you'd like to take that extra step in helping support my videos, check out my Patreon where there's a bunch of different rewards involving the channel, such as a chance to directly influence the videos being produced. It isn't necessary, but it can really help in the long run, but as always, I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.